Sometimes there are very inexpensive things you can do to a bike that dramatically change its performance for the better. And it should simply be done on every bike, in my opinion. This is one of them. If you have an FZ09, MT09, Tracer, FJ, XSR, any of the Yamaha triples that use these same brake pads, this is a fantastic upgrade. I know, spoiler alert. This is gonna be a combo video of basically how to do a front brake job. It's very simple, just turning a few bolts, and then a quick test on the road comparing these upgraded double H rated brake pads against the stocks. Now the stocks, they were adequate. That's the best I can say about them. If that's all you've been used to, you're not gonna think there's anything missing. You're gonna think, what, those brakes are great. Why would you ever wanna change them? Well, if you haven't experienced truly better brakes, you wouldn't know. I have. Unfortunately, the bar is set a little higher for me. So if you saw my last video where I had to do a quick emergency braking maneuver, I was left wanting. So this is the first thing you do is you look at what stock components you have and you see what can quickly and easily be upgraded. Pads are usually the number one thing. I highly recommend these pads. They're very inexpensive. Cheapest I found them was on Amazon, link below. Again, I highly recommend everybody installs these pads for a dramatically better front braking experience. Let's go. So here's what you need to do a brake job on your front wheels. I'm only gonna be doing the front in this particular video simply because I don't need to touch the rear. I'm doing this to upgrade the braking performance of the bike, not because it needs a brake job, but obviously anybody that needs to do it because your pads worn out, this is the simple procedure. I'm not doing the back because the back stock pads are excellent. They already overpower the wheel, so I'm just doing the front. Now this is just for normal street use. If you have track needs, you are probably going to be doing the rear. It's basically the same thing, just a little bit different bolt pattern. So what we have up front are radial mounted calipers, we have an ABS sensor, and we're just gonna be protecting some stuff. That is really about it. First thing we do is remove that ABS, or I'm, well, it's technically a speedo sensor, but it also works for the ABS system, with a four mil Allen wrench. And quick tip, I got a great full set of these T-handle spinners at Harbor Freight, full metric set for $6.99. You get a flat and a ball end. They work absolutely fantastically. They also have a big combo pack with SAE and metric and some extra long ones for I think 15 bucks. That was a good deal too, but I just had no use for SAE. So we're gonna take out this bolt. That will release our sensor. Everything else stays with the caliper assembly. We just have two mounting bolts for the caliper itself here, and then the caliper assembly comes off. Now we have a quick connect we wanna dis uh, disengage right here. It's just one of those little plastic ratcheting things. You just take the two top and separate them and it opens up. There's also one in the center. If you need extra room, you can also do that one. Now it's very important that when you swing this off, number one, you protect the bike itself. I have some duct tape here. Usually I use masking tape because it's less sticky, but I happen to be out of it. And we're just gonna put that gently right here along the rim so that when this slides out and you accidentally touch the rim, nothing chips. When this was delivered, I had a couple little tiny chips in the the rim paint from somebody doing that. It happens. Uh, if you do happen to do that, quick tip, a little black bottle of touch-up paint from any auto store or Walmart or whatever, dab that on there and it completely disappears. And that's what I did. I can't even find the spot anymore. So we're gonna protect this. I also suggest that if, depending on where you put your caliper after you take it off, if you need to swing it around, get yourself a towel and drape it over all of your paintwork. So you're not dragging any parts and you're not accidentally hitting any parts. What I'm gonna do is simply rest it up here on a shop stool. If you have a bucket or anything up close to this level that you can just set this on, that's ideal. The entire point is that you do not support it or stress the rubber brake lines. Those need to be completely stress-free. All the weight should be the caliper itself mounted to something or hanging from something. You could use a bungee cord or loop some zip ties and hang this off something. That's completely fine too. As long as there's no stress on your rubber brake line, you are good to go. So let's zip these three bolts off. And you know what, while I'm in here, I'm gonna take off my yellow reflectors here just because on this particular bike, I don't like the way they look. Check your local laws if they're required before you do so. But in this case, it's completely a cosmetic thing 
and it just doesn't match the look of the bike because I took off the other ones on the back already. Let's get to it. Now the way the brake pads are held in the caliper is very simple. What we have is a slot at the top of the pads and through the slot is a small little rod and it's held in with these two little cotter pins. Just pull them out and that will allow the rod to slide free. clip will come off and now the pads drop right out. So we just swap in our new ones. Now if your bike is relatively new like this one, it's only got a thousand miles on it, it's not going to be that big of an issue. But if you're going from very worn pads to new pads, and this goes for any vehicle, you may need to use a C-clamp or large pliers gently to compress your pistons a little bit to get yourself clearance. Otherwise you're going to put on fresh pads and that gap is gonna be eaten up and you won't be able to install it over your rotor. Another note, whenever you change pads out on a worn rotor, even though it's got plenty of life left in it, it still has a wear pattern. It's gonna take about 50 miles of normal to light braking to get the new pads worn in to your rotor. So don't go balls to the walls on brand new installed brake pads. Think of it like new tires. They need to be scrubbed in. So give it a good 50 miles of light to average braking before you give it full braking and expect good performance out of it. Another thing we want to do is apply a very thin coat of brake lube to the back of the new brake pads. And you can see the pattern there where the pistons contact. That's where you want the film and that just prevents them from squealing. We can see the difference here between the pads themselves. Obviously the same shape and size but the materials are very different. These are double H rated centered pads. Basically they give better bite, better brake feel, and better overall braking performance. Much better than these. It's kind of like tire ratings, you know? Some tires, they're only rated for a certain speed limit, and then handling kind of goes to crap. Well, same thing is with brake pads. Most bikes, most high performance bikes, already come with great brake pads. These and the FZ07 family and most lower end tier bikes don't. So they just give you these standard ones. That's why this is such a worthwhile upgrade. Big difference, low cost. So we put in our retainer clip and the side with the two little arms faces up. It just lays in place, it won't stay. Just hold it with your hand there. Flip it around and your pads drop right in. Obviously the backing material towards the calipers or the pistons rather, and the little hole facing up into the bracket. Make sure you don't get any of the lube on the pad material itself. Now we can put our rod and cotter pin back in. Now we can slide back in the locating rod, our two cotter pins, and then installation is simply the reverse. The torque spec on the caliper bolts is 25 foot-pounds. Definitely use a torque wrench if you're not real familiar with the feel. It's going to be a good bit more than your average spark plug. The other side is exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Snap our brake lines back in the holders, take it out, give it a good 50 miles brake in, and then I'm going to do a performance test and we'll see how it fared to the other day. Okay, brake job's done. Now I'm going to go out and brake these pads in. Now you can do normal riding for 50 plus miles and if you're just doing normal braking during that time they're going to break in i'm going to go specifically just for these brakes so i'm just going to do some light neighborhood riding for 15 20 minutes doing a lot of stops at all the stop signs and that'll do it i don't need to do actual 50 normal miles because riding down the road doesn't do anything to break in your brakes now very important if you do any kind of brake work if you have done anything to your reservoirs, make double sure that they are filled up, caps are all on, and everything is locked down tight. If you've done any work at your calipers, 
before you go anywhere, before you even roll the bike, this includes working on a shop stand or a center stand or anything like that, pump your brakes to build up pressure. And there we go. I did have to spread my calipers just a wee bit for these new pads, and that's why. Otherwise, you can start going and, oh, you have no brakes. Yeah, you can be in for a bad time. All right, I'm going to go break these in, and then we'll do some testing. Okay, so we're back here on the same street, same speeds, and we're going to do some braking tests here. I'll get some clear room, get down to the end here. Basically, I did the brake in, and here's the thing with braking in brake pads. You know when they brake in. It's not like tires where, eh, you can't really tell a difference. You wouldn't know unless they go out from under you. With brake pads, it's like a switch. It took maybe about 50 stops. And then all of a sudden, bam, they just started biting a whole lot better. That's the wear pattern between the used rotors and the new pads meshing, getting all those little tiny micro grooves worn down to the same level and getting full contact on that new pad. All right, nobody behind me. Let's start testing the brakes here. This is just front brake. Now, you know what? I did front and rear last time, so that'll be a fair comparison. I'll do it just a normal emergency stop, 40 miles an hour. Okay, <laughs> dramatically different. Huge day and night difference. That was actuating the front ABS and pulsating the front end just like the rear. Everybody should do this. That is a totally different braking experience. Completely different. Do it again here. Whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was a stoppy. I'm not kidding. And I've never done one of those before. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> there you go, uh, wow, did not actually mean to do that, it scared me a little bit there, <laughs> I, honestly I've never done one of those before, but that rear end came right up off the ground, and this is with two finger braking, with the stock ones I was squeezing as hard as I could, and you saw in the last video even actuating the throttle a little bit because I was squeezing so hard with all my fingers and it was just slowing. It wasn't even actuating the front ABS. This feels exactly like my FJR now. I'm just gently braking. I'm using my two middle fingers, not even squeezing hard. And it is just coming to a dead stop with ease. Dramatic difference. Can't tell you enough how big of a difference that is, absolutely everybody should do this immediately. And this also applies to whatever lower end tier of bike you may have, any of the FZ07s especially. So there you go guys, hope this helps somebody. Trust me, this is one of the very best upgrades you want to do to your bike. I love these inexpensive little ones that make such a big difference. It just pisses me off that they don't do it stock from the factory on all bikes. You know, the FJR has exceptional braking. There's no reason that a nine, 10, 11, $12,000 bike shouldn't as well. That's it, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Share it if you really loved it and subscribe to see more. See you next time.